Welcome back to Low Headroom. Today we're going to look at how to put a master volume into our 5e3 build. This is a pretty easy modification. I think the hardest part is going to be to ensure that we don't introduce any noise into the circuit. But uh, I'm going to explain all that in just a second, so stick around. But first, before I begin, I want to give credit where credit's due. RobRobinette.com is a great resource for 5e3 modifications, and that's where I learned a lot of this information. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about how this master volume is going to work. We're going to do what's called a pre-phase inverter master volume. And basically, all that we're going to do is replace this 1 meg um, resistor here, grid leak resistor, with a 1 meg uh, audio pot. So, how does this work? Alright, so our guitar signal is already passed through our first preamp tube and it's coming down into our second preamp tube. It enters the grid uh, via pin 2 and it comes out of the plate, goes through the coupling cap to reduce the, uh, or to eliminate the DC and the AC continues to pass to this 1 meg, meg grid leak resistor. It goes into the grid here in pin 7, and it comes out two places. It comes out of pin 8, which is the cathode, and pin 6, which is the plate. And the cathode is the non-inverted signal, and the plate is the inverted signal. So what we're going to do to control this signal coming in here is we're going to replace this with a audio pot. Alright, so how are we going to wire this master volume? Well. The first thing we're going to do is remove this 1 meg grid leak resistor. Then we're going to install a master volume 1 meg pot. Now, this is with the post facing down. All right. So the first wire, this purple wire, is going to go down, and that's our ground, and that's going to go right here to this point. Okay. Uh, the second wire is going to go all the way down to pin 7 okay of the of the preamp tube there are already some wires there so we'll just have to uh, break the solder and push that wire in the third and this volume pot is post down by the way so I just want you to know that the third is going to go to the other end where the grid leak resistor was right here so that's all there is to it now one thing to remember is we, we don't want to introduce noise in the circuit and remember our filament wires are down here right and if we get it near our filament wires um, it's going to introduce noise so if I can I'm going to try to run these wires underneath the board but I don't think that's going to be possible so uh, either way we're going to get it done stick around first thing we're going to do is drain the filter caps now how does this work all right I got this off of Amazon, and it is really a great little device. Basically, it's just a resistor in there, and it's connected to an alligator clip. And so I put the alligator clip on a ground point, which is going to be the chassis right here. And then um, on the positive end of my capacitors, I'm going to touch each one and hold it there for 10 to 15 seconds. Alright, and on this one there's a little light, and if you see the light light up, you'll see it briefly for a second, and then it will disappear. So we're just going to hold it there, hold it there, and I, I've already done this, so I'm just making sure. Alright, so let's get to the mod. Alright, this is the resistor right here, and we're going to pull that out. That's right next to our filter cap that we just drained. Just going to remove it entirely. We are go it's been removed and now we're going to move on to unwiring the jacks. All right, I'm going to go for this jack here because it's just more easily accessible. There's more room to maneuver. But either one of these will work. All right, so that task required me to get the wire from here and also the red wire that connects the two jacks together. So now it's time to take it out. Alright, it's been removed. Alright, so this is a B pot. You're going to want an A pot. This is the linear pot. Um, this is basically not, it's going to go from 0 to 60 real fast. So, if you've got, uh, order the A pots if you can. 
All right, the pot is in. I had to put the contacts facing this way. Sorry to have to change orientations on you, but this is a, uh, I can get better lighting this way. First, gonna start with this terminal here. All right, if you have yours oriented like me, it's this one right here. So I'm gonna use some of the blue wire I have left over. All right, so we now have that one soldered in. Next thing we're gonna do is estimate the length. So I think I'm gonna want to tuck this wire under this lip here and bring it down like that. Let's try that. Next thing we want to do is solder this wire right in here. Okay, that's been done. Now I'm going to go ahead and tuck this wire. Alright, you know what time it is now. It's time to solder that middle one. Alright, that one's been soldered. Alright. The recipient of this wire is going to be pin 7. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right there. I'm actually going to put a purple, purple dot on it. So that I know that that's the one we're shooting for. Alright, so my plan is actually to run it down here and go under all of these wires and then come up to pin 7. So it looks like I'm going to have to cut it somewhere around there. All right, sorry, sorry to reorient again, but we got it in pin 7 now. The one I marked purple. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Go ahead and solder that. Okay, it's time for the last one. Alright, now that one's soldered in. Alright, we're going to take the wire and do what we did with the other one. We're going to snake it around and it's going to come to this point here. All right, it's done. To summarize, we got this point, this point, and then pin seven. Pin seven right there, connected to all three terminals. All right, one thing to mention here is we've got our new blue wire soldered here and our new blue wire soldered here. Well, we had an existing orange wire there, or whatever color you use, so it's time to remove that wire as well so that the signal will fully flow only through our one meg potentiometer so very important step let's go ahead and do that all right so we've taken that out it used to go from here to here now our pot is um, so let's check our work what have we done all right we've taken our first leftmost terminal here on the pot and we've driven it to a ground point right here all right where the grid leak resistor used to be now we've taken the second terminal we've wrapped it around we've snaked it underneath and it is going to pin seven here very important now last but not least this terminal here we wrapped a wire all the way around, again snaked it under, and it came to this point here, right where the other end of the grid leak resistor used to be. That's what we did. We removed that wire that used to be there, so now the signal has to pass through our pot. Now just check all your solder joints. You know we've been in here messing with some stuff. Just make sure everything's still attached. Um, if you if your wires are flapping around you can always use t tiny zip ties Which is what I used here to secure that blue wire under the lip so feel free to utilize those Doesn't look half bad Okay Quick demonstration. This is without the master volume. That's called double frequency phase inverter blocking distortion. That's not a mouthful. Now the thing about that kind of distortion is it makes the 5E3 less pedal friendly. 
but if we apply the master volume here, it's cleaner. frequency phase inverter blocking distortion. <laughs> 